Welcome to Parkbench Tutors. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, look us up at parkbenchtutors.com or you can find us on Facebook. In this podcast, we're going to continue our work for the Access course and we're going to look at what we mean by a safe working environment. So, what is a safe working environment? You can see two examples here of working environments and you can see that the apparel that they are wearing is a response to that working environment. So a working environment promotes safety from physical and chemical hazards. It provides safety in terms of security. It will provide safety relating to the conduct of the employer and the employees. And it will provide safety in terms of our own behavior at that workplace. So, how do we promote health and safety? What should we be doing? Well, our first e effort is to look at ways in which we can reduce risk in the workplace. This is done through the use of safe practices. It can be done through training staff. It can be done through having written policies, but policies on their own, of course, are of little use unless those rules are given to all employees. In other words, all employees should be aware of what they are supposed to do. So all of those things, safe practices, training staff, policies and rules, all of those help to reduce risk in the workplace and thereby promote health and safety. So who's responsible for all this? Well, if you look at the fire extinguisher, you'd say, yes, the employer should be providing the fire extinguisher. And if it's on an airplane, the owner of the airplane should be providing all the safety equipment there. But the safety equipment on its own is of little use. So employees are also responsible for safety in the workplace. Who enforces health and safety? Well, that can vary from one country to another, but in the United Kingdom it's the Health and Safety Executive, often known simply as the HSE. Now, here's an example of making a risk assessment. You can see a situation found within a workplace, and the question is, is there a hazard here? In fact, there are several hazards. You might well be able to identify them. So, what do you think would make this safer? Think about the number of appliances here, think about those cables, and you'll get an idea of where you might start. Here's another work situation, and a typical task for someone involved with health and safety is to assess risk. So, there's a work situation how would you assess the risks of that situation? It's a common enough one. We all spend probably far too much time working at computers now, and they carry with it certain risks. We should consider the time spent at the workstation. We should consider when breaks are needed. The height of the monitor. Is the operator looking up, down, or straight ahead to see the monitor? Similarly with the position of the keyboard, are the arms straight or are the arms having to be raised or pushed forward or anything to, in order to type easily? And if you've got someone who wears glasses, well you should encourage them to get their sight tested regularly to ensure they're not suffering because a lot of the work done with a computer monitor is of course close up work. And you might also consider the lighting levels, whether there is reflection off the screen. And you may have thought of many other risks as well, but those are just a few examples. How about this one? Here's a fairly easy one. There are some potential hazards shown in this picture. There's a saw being left on the floor. There's a loose cable dragging across the floor. And wearing trainers is not exactly the ideal of footwear for someone who's working in construction. What precautions should be taken here? Here's another typical workplace of some workers repairing something on a rail line. 
Well, the obvious one is actually that you should ensure that there are no trains running on the track. Hard hats and safety goggles would be useful in this situation. And a few warning notices. And of course you would probably think of others as well. Now here we can see a situation where precautions have already been taken and you should be able to identify at least two very obvious precautions that have been taken for safety. Right, so what do we do then to make people aware? Well we can erect barriers or we can use tape to create a barrier. We can use warning signs. This one stands for radioactivity. This one stands for hazardous chemical. And this one stands for high voltage. We can use cones to restrict access to areas. We can use devices to warn us of potential hazards. Smoke alarms, carbon monoxide alarms. Now you may not often see this sign but certainly not in Lancashire but we can of course use signs to help us when we are driving. What's a good working practice? And why have good working practice? Well of course it helps the employees to complete tasks and it makes sure the tasks are completed safely and effectively. So how do we do this? How do we establish good working practice? Well, the answer is in training and in making employees aware. Here's a nice situation that you don't really want to see around the office. So is there a safety issue here? Would you like to be working in an office where filing cabinets were left in that state? What does it tell you about the working practices of the employee or employees who left the filing cabinet in that state? And what would you do if you were the manager in that situation? Let's consider what we would like if we were working at an office, which is something like this, a nice, clear, tidy desk, and what we wouldn't like. How about this? Why are these considered to be hazards? They're both actually in a similar situation. You should be able to spot at least two or three obvious things here, which are hazards in the workplace. Okay, safe working practices. Is this carelessness or is it stupidity? Or is this one just plain crazy? In this situation, no hard hats and yet obviously working in a dangerous situation and could be using a mobile phone instead of focusing on the job. Is there any safety shown here? You have someone using an open saw and using their hands to push wood towards that saw. How about this one? Perched on a stepladder, should a stepladder even be used here, and perched just using one foot. And of course this is just plain stupid, carrying meat around. And to finish with, let's not forget that this is also about safe working practices in the workplace harassment. We should try and eliminate sexual harassment. Here's a simple example of sexual harassment. And we should try and reduce and eliminate bullying. Unfortunately these days a lot of the bullying can in fact be carried out via the internet and this is referred to as cyberbullying. But don't forget the more traditional side, where someone simply shouts at another person. This ends our session on health and safety and safe working practices, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors. You can find us on Facebook, or you can look us up on parkbenchtutors.com. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies.